Okay, good day guys. So again, this is Mr. Fajardo, your teacher in your spherical trigonometry. So the next uh, thing that we have to do is now to solve for the other unknown parts of a right spherical triangle given some of its parts or at least three of the parts. Now we have the 90 degree angle and then we have the other two sides which is given. So before we try to use the Napier's rule, we have to consider first that the theorems that we have last time. Okay, now, so notice, since small a is 50 degrees, so this means that it's less than 90 degrees, so it terminates on quadrant 1. So according to theorem 1, its opposite angle, which is your angle a, should also terminate in the same quadrant. So it means that it should also terminate in quadrant 1 or an acute angle. Of course, small b is the opposite side of your 90 degrees, so it doesn't matter. Next, so using the second theorem, since the first two sides are both acute, so they are both they both terminate in the first quadrant, so what can you say about your small c? Okay, very good. So your small c should also be an acute angle or should also be terminating in quadrant 1 because of the theorem since they both terminate in the same quadrant so the third should also term should terminate in the first quadrant now with this we go back to theorem one so this will tell you that your angle c should also terminate in quadrant one okay now now so our next thing to do is to now make our triangle and then later on we'll try to draw our Napier circle. So I've already drawn it in here. So notice I drawn our right triangle here where in your 90 degrees is angle B and then the other angles angle C and then angle A and then its opposites we have your small a and then the opposite side of angle C would be small c and the opposite side of angle B is small b. So since this is your 90 degrees so I'll be placing angle B here and then I have here your small a Notice here, and then your angle C, and then your small b, your angle A, and then your small c, and then I place code there. Now, if you notice, I placed an asterisk or a star on the two given parts. So why did I have to do that? So this is actually my style or a technique so that I can easily use the Napier's rules without using the computed values. So notice, since if we have these two parts which are given, so what is the first thing that we can solve? Okay, correct. So notice, your angle C is actually or will serve as the middle part of these two parts, which is the adjacent to or adjacent sides or adjacent parts to your angle C. So we can actually use your first Napier's rule, which states that, the sine of the middle part will be equal to the tangents of the adjacent parts. So let's write it down here. So in this case, your sine, the sine of the middle part, which is your angle C, will now be equal to the tangents or the product of the tangents of the adjacent parts, which is your small b and your co-a. So last time, since we have tangent of CoA here, we can actually rewrite this in this manner, wherein this will be equal to tangent of your small b again, and, or sorry, so this will be over your tangent of your small a. So this is your sine, angle C. So we can just solve for angle C to be the arc sine, or the inverse sine of your tangent b over tangent small a so we can just substitute our values here sorry about that so this is now arc sine of your tangent what is your small b your small b was 30 degrees so divide this by tangent of your small a which is 50 degrees so by the use of our calculator we can just actually solve that this will be around 
98 degrees. I rounded it off already to two decimal places. We're done with the first unknown part. So next, we are now to solve for either your small c and then your angle a. So what do you want to choose? Oh, it doesn't matter actually. So let's try to solve for your cosy first. Now, if I'll be trying to solve for cosy and I need to use the given parts, which is your small b and then your small a, so which of this among which among these three will serve as the middle part? Okay, you're correct. So notice that since we have these three parts, small b will serve as the middle part of these two parts which will serve as the opposite parts of your small b. So we can now use the second rule or the second Napier's rule which states that the sine of the middle part which is your small b will be equal to the cosines or the product of the cosines of these two opposite parts. So this, this will just be what? So writing it here we have sine of your small b will be equal now to cosine of your cos c and then multiplied to cosine of your co a. So again, so we have discussed last time that if we have the cosine of the complement or the cos c, you can actually rewrite this as sine c and this will just simply be sine of small a. Okay. So notice we need to solve for small c, so we just have to divide both sides of the equation by sine a. So I divide this by sine a, same thing with this one. So this means that your sine c will now be equal to sine b over sine a. So we are now ready to solve for small c. So your small c, I just have to write it in the right, right side. So this will now be equal to arc sine of sine b over sine a. So again, we just substitute. So arc sine, your b is 30 degrees, and then your small a is 50 degrees. Okay, so we just use our calculator. So using our calculator, so this will be around 40.75 degrees. Again, I rounded it off to the nearest two decimal places. Okay, before we solve for the last part, so let us go back. So from here, we were able to identify that your small c should be in quadrant 1. So is your angle c. So if we go back to our previous answer, notice your angle C is 28.98, which is really is an acute angle, so which terminates in the first quadrant. So same thing with your small c here. Okay, so we're in the right track. Okay, so we're done with your small c. And the last thing that we have to solve is your angle A. Now, if you look at this, so we need to solve for angle A. And then we have to use again the given your small b and then your small a. So if we uh, take into, uh, if we focus our attention in these three parts, which one will now serve as the middle part? Okay, correct. So the, um, the one which will serve as the middle part will be small a, and the other two will serve as the opposite part of your small a or your co a. So we'll just be using again the second Napier's rules. Okay, the second Napier's rule states that the sine of the middle part, in this case, we have your CoA, will now be equal to the cosines or the product of the cosines of the opposite parts, which is your small b, and then your angle A. Okay, so again, sine of CoA, so we can now write this as cosine of A, and this will turn out to be cosine small b, and then cosine of angle A. So we have to solve for cosine of angle A. So we just again divide both sides of the equation by cosine B. So this will be removed. So cosine of angle A will now be equal to cosine of small a over cosine 
sorry of small b so let me write it here so your cosine I'm sorry so your angle a now will be equal to the arc cosine or the inverse cosine of cosine small a over cosine of small b okay so we now just substitute cosine inverse so your small a was uh, 50 degrees and then your small b was 30 degrees okay so we just use our calculator again so again by using our calculator this will now be around 42.08 degrees again i rounded off to the nearest two decimal places so we are now done so let's go back your angle a is supposed to be in quadrant one which is consistent so we have those answers okay i hope you learned something from this activity we'll have more examples later on see you then